Hi, I'm Victoria and I'm a thyroid cancer survivor. I'm at the 22nd International Thyroid Cancer Survivors Association Conference in Denver, Colorado. And I'm here with Dr. Kim Vanderveen. Dr. Vanderveen, thank you so much for being with us here today. Thanks, Victoria. We're going to be talking about cancer survivorship, what it means, and, and navigating the road ahead. But before we get started, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? So my name is Kim Vanderveen. I'm an endocrine surgeon, meaning that I was a general surgeon by original training, but went on to get both a master's degree um, in kind of cancer, uh, cancer training or cancer uh, follow-up, um, as well as a fellowship training technically in endocrine surgery, including thyroid cancer management. Great, thank you so much. So what do we mean when we say navigating the road ahead of cancer survivorship? What does that mean? So one of the things that a lot of my patients will tell me is that somebody told them, oh, thyroid cancer, that's the best cancer, or just get your surgery and you'll be done, or just get your iodine treatment and you'll be done. And I think that's the biggest you know, pitfall or, you know, or one of the wrong things that you can say to a thyroid cancer survivor, because truthfully speaking, you know, more than 98% of patients that have thyroid cancer are gonna survive long-term and do great. The problem is there are long-term consequences to having thyroid cancer and it's a lifelong follow-up. Um, so again, you don't ever get your thyroid back. Your hormone management's never quite the same. And so again, it is a journey that is lifelong. And so we want people to just recognize that that survivorship, it's not a five year and you're done. It's not a 10 year and you're done. Um, it's a lifelong process. And just to be prepared for that long journey and make sure that you stay on the road um, and stay between the lines because as long as you do, you're gonna do just fine. Okay, so then what are some of the things that as a patient we can be doing to prepare for this sort of life ahead of us without a thyroid and going through the treatments? And well, so I'm gonna pitch the Thyca Conference because all of my patients that I've attended and I've attended now for um, going back five years, um, this is such a great way to educate yourself about what to expect, to meet other people, and maybe validate some of the concerns or things that you're going through, which your family and friends may not quite understand, because um, they're going like, oh, but you're gonna survive. Like, why is this still affecting you? This, this definitely affects you. So showing up and learning about your cancer, coming to a conference like this, learning online. There are a lot of good resources and bad resources online, so pick your sources carefully, um, and then I think finding a good doctor that you can talk to and make sure your questions gets an get answered um, and that you have a plan in place for a long-term follow-up. Again, not one and done. That's really important information. And one of the things we hear a lot is become an advocate for yourself. From a doctor's perspective, what does that mean when you see a patient who's being an advocate for themselves? What does that look like? I think first off, you have to understand your disease and what your goals are. And so I think you also need to make sure that your goals are the same as what your treatment goals by your doctor. Because sometimes as physicians, we think we know what, what we want or we think we know where we're headed or what the goal for your treatment is. But there's always some personal values and personal goals that come in about things that you wanna do um, or how the treatment affects you and making sure that first off, speak up. Make sure your questions get answered. Make sure your individual goals are clear. So if your doctor says, okay, great, um, you know, this is the target you know, blood test we're looking for, everything looks great. If that's not in line what you're feeling um, or you don't understand the plan or understand the answers, speak up. Um, and again, if you've educated yourself, you'll be able to ask really good questions and then hopefully get the good answers that you need. That's great information and doctor's orders, speak up. Um, okay, so what are some of the pitfalls that uh, patients should avoid? Again, given that this is a lifetime um, journey, what are, what are some of the things that we should avoid doing? Uh, well, so number one, I think you just have to like, jump right in and recognize this is a lifelong journey. You have to accept that first off and make sure that you have a lifelong treatment plan. Don't miss your appointments. Make sure you've got a follow-up plan in place and that you keep those follow-ups. Um, we had talked about a little bit earlier about how, how some people hit that five-year mark. They've had no evidence of disease and they go like, oh, I'm good. I don't need to follow up anymore. And I've seen a number of patients get in trouble because then their hormone monitoring got out of whack, or maybe they lost their endocrinologist or their health plan changed, and with their insurance changed, they kind of lost their follow-up plan and then got into trouble with a cancer recurrence. 
Um, the second pitfall uh, is I think a lot of people are using um, herbal medicines and complementary medicines and integrative techniques, and I am a huge like uh, proponent of complementary and integrative medicine. Um, but it has to be that complementary and integrative. It is not an alternative to good Western medical care. So we don't have an herbal alternative to thyroid hormone replacement. We don't have an over-the-counter alternative to uh, calcitriol, which is an activated vitamin D we use for low calcium situations. And so you have to make sure if you're gonna go and use some of those what we call complementary therapies that you're you know, talking with both providers and that they're on the same page and they're working together, um, not fighting against each other or that you're choosing one over the other, they should work together. That's a really important point too, because as as patients and survivors, our, our friends and relatives who love us and who mean really well often send us links to natural mm -hmm. cures or you know natural ways to treat. And um, so it's important that we talk with our providers about those things then, sounds like. Mm -hmm. Okay, is there anything else that you think thyroid cancer survivors and patients should know about the journey ahead? Um, I think the most important thing that I hear from my patients um, and talking with survivors um, and this is part of why coming to a Thyca conference is so great, um, is that you get to interact with other people and hear that other people are going through some of the same things. Um, life after thyroid cancer, you, you get to what we call a new normal. Yeah. It doesn't go back, you can't go back. You can't take the cancer away, you can't get your thyroid back. Um, and so I like to tell patients your life will be different. It doesn't have to be bad different, we don't have to put a judgment on there, but it is perhaps gonna be a little bit different in learning to cope, maybe that little grief process about my life has changed. And I think anybody with a chronic medical illness feels that. Thyroid cancer is a chronic medical illness and we need to recognize that, prepare for that long road, um, and then help people kind of find a new normal or a happy place to be on the other side of that transition. Dr. Vanderveen, thank you so much for being us, uh, here with us today. Thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm.